What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Forge. I'm Vulcan and today we're talking about Rift Prime leveling, specifically cleric leveling. Now, I roll a cleric. That's my primary class. I rolled that back during launch. I'm rolling it now and it's pretty great. I love this class and uh, it just kind of fits my play style. So before we get started, let's talk about the cleric class itself. So the Cleric's a pretty dynamic class, just like most classes in Rift, and this one has two ranged DPS souls, two melee souls, one tank soul, and three healing souls off the bat. Now, there are other souls avail available for purchase, but we're not going to get into those in this particular video. Um, we just want to really talk about the ones that you have available right at the start. So, the souls themselves are... Justicar, Shaman, Sentinel, Inquisitor, Druid, Warden, Cabalist, Purifier. Now, since this video is aimed at leveling, we're going to focus on a few things. Survivability, self-healing, and DPS. So there are two builds that we're going to focus on today, and these are the Justicar, Int, or, I'm sorry, Inquisitor, and Sentinel build, and the Shaman, Justicar, and Sentinel build. Now, both of these carry a ranged melee hybrid flavor and will offer pretty good survivability and self-healing. The DPS won't blow any doors off the hinges, but you'll be able to survive most encounters and 2v1 situations. So looking at the Cleric, this is not a strong solo leveling class. I mean, it's often outperformed by just about every other class when it comes to leveling itself. So Rangers, Rogues, just nuke things much, much faster. Warriors are more durable. They can dish out some damage via their champion, Beastmaster, um, you know, souls. And mages are just a glass cannon that literally just blow the shit out of everything. So, um, and then they leave their t skeleton tank to soak most of the damage. So, but what clerics do have, or while clerics do have a tank in the form of a satyr um, in the druid class, or druid soul, I've had issues with builds taking full advantage of this. Not to mention, if you don't put any points into it, the satyr is pretty much useless after level 30. Um, and it's an issue balancing good DPS while putting a lot of points into your druid uh, class. Now, what we're talking about today is what you see on the screen. So we got Sentinel, Shaman, Justicar. Justicar is the tanking soul for clerics. Now, this soul is all about, you know, basically protecting yourself. Uh, you got wisdom increase, you got base health increase. I mean, you got some self heals uh, through salvation. Any uh, damaging abilities restore 31 to 34 health to the cleric. It restores twice as much when you use single target Justicar abilities. So as long as you're using a Justicar ability, you're gonna be getting you know at least 62 to uh, 68 health back. And that's pretty good. I mean, and that's each hit. That's not you know a passive over a certain amount of time but that's each hit. And then on top of that, restores 5% of that health when using non-channeled, non-just card, ground target of various uh, effects. So, and this generates no threat. So it's purely a self-sustaining buff. It's not anything out of the ordinary. It's just a consistent tick during combat, as long as you're using just a car abilities. Some of the other things in here are Strike of Judgment, which is your spammable ability. You have Bolt of Radiance, which is your ranged ability. You have Hammer of Duty, which is a ranged um, conviction consumption ability. Your convictions are up here. And convictions are essentially points that just get built up when you use Justicar abilities. Um, it has a cap of four, and you have to use convictions for different things. So, for instance, you can use convictions to uh, do a self-heal. You can use convictions for different blocks, for things like this, like Hammer of Faith consumes all convictions, um, deals a bunch of damage in AoE, you know. So it's pretty cool. It's a uh, it's a really, really good tanking class. This is actually what I plan to main at my uh, at level cap. I plan to be a cleric tank. Um, it's a blast. I absolutely love it. So let's move on to Shaman. Now, Shaman's our main damage dealer, right? So... <laughs> they, they get super edgy. The shaman is an offensive cleric. He serves as a conduit for anger of winter. It's like, okay, chill out, calm down. But the cool thing about shaman is it's all air and water based. So ice, air, whatever you want to say. Um, and it's very melee heavy. 
but it does have some ranged abilities. So the reason I went with Shaman, um, one, it has great gap closing abilities in the form of Ride the Lightning. You charge the enemy, you deal damage, you root the enemy, and it removes all movement pairing effects from you. You have Ecker's Grasp, which is a instant ranged ability. Um, you get your AoE attack early on, which is nice for ad clearing. Right up here, you get Glacial Shield, which is a nice, obviously absorbs 85% of incoming damage up to 360, and it deals damage back. So, and it's on a 30 second cooldown, so it's pretty quick for a shield like that, and you're able to really protect yourself. Now, the bread and butter of this build itself is going to come in the form of Massive Blow. This deals 805 damage and it always critically hits and it always deals extra damage based on spell critical hit. So this is a big, big ability. It's on a 15 second cooldown and it's gnarly. Compared to the 331 damage that Crushing Blow puts out, um, it also applies um, Twisted Soul, which reduces single target healing. Not that it matters when you're leveling, but it could matter if you get stuck sideways in a Rift Invasion or something like that. You also get a buff, Vengeance of the Winter Storm. Causes weapon attacks to deal an additional 36 to 40 water damage, lasts an hour. And Lightning Hammer is the dot that this class gets. It deals 171 air damage, deals an additional 421 or 15 seconds. Damage increases over the duration, so it ramps up. But this is a, towards the end of your leveling, it starts to put out some serious damage. Um, especially when you unlock this, Rage of the North. Add 10 stacks of Rage of the North, increases critical hit chance with damaging abilities by 10% per stack. So you get 100% crit chance, 90, you know, 80, 70, all the way down. So you pair this sucker with massive blow and crushing blow and really everything else, and you just start slamming damage. So let's get into a few of the other uh, abilities, right? So you get a nice Heart of the Frozen Sea resistances, which is good for leveling. Icy Blow, um, which is just a replacement essentially for Crushing Blow. So it deals 378 water damage. Now, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is Crushing Blow is going to be more for your PvP section because it reduces that healing the target receives. Now, if you're just worried about just pure PvE and you just want something that'll put out some damage, I would go with Icy Blow. Uh, Courage of the Eagle increases Wisdom by 5%. Now the Cleric class itself is kind of interesting because um, Wisdom, Intelligence, Spell Critical Hit, that stuff actually flips over and um, jumps into Attack Power, Dexterity, things like that. So you don't have to worry about um, getting a separate gear set or anything like that. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you guys have played World of Warcraft, you can think of it like that, right? Where you only have to have one set for your class because all the stats and abilities will change based on whatever spec you're in. This is the exact same thing. Now, once you get down to 51, you get Frozen Wrath. That's where you start to deal out some additional damage. Um, we're talking 1336 water damage over 15 seconds. Increases the damage the enemy takes from the Cleric's Vengeance of Winter Storm by 100%. And that's this... Uh, right over here where's that thing at vengeance of winter storm all right shoot it's around here somewhere so vengeance of winter storm by 100 percent spreads up to five nearby enemies hit by your strike of maelstrom i believe it's this right here they just haven't renamed it which ugh, gross so either way it's very very good for aoe and taking care of any really anybody around you so um and that's one thing i will note some of the tooltips and the names of abilities have changed, but some of the tooltips have updated to reflect that change. So get used to that for looking for things. Now, why do we choose the Sentinel? Okay, we have a tank one, we get that, survivability. We have this, obviously, this is our primary DPS. We have Sentinel, why? This heal right here, healing breath. We're talking 441 health every eight seconds on top of a cast heal for 324 health um, while this one's on cooldown and we get a endurance by 30 um, to all target and party or raid members including pets things like that so this is pure 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 survivability um, any extra points that i can't apply to my shaman i usually throw in sentinel um, in any sort of healing and absorption spells just because for survivability and while you're out leveling this is big i get into situations all the time where um you know i'm down health i'm getting just 
absolutely steamrolled and being able to pop healing breath every eight seconds really really helps so that is the build now jumping over to gear for the cleric class itself the important stats are obviously st spell power and wisdom wisdom is pretty much your bread and butter anything wisdom converts to purely like it says spell power spell crit max mana um, so you want to go straight wisdom as much as you possibly can. If you can get raw spell power, you can go for that as well. Um, but try to pair these up. If there's no wisdom on something, not likely, but if there is, um, try to go for intelligence as a close second. Um, try to avoid any attack power, physical crit, stuff like that. Um, because it doesn't affect you, um, the cleric class. Because your spell power and your wisdom get converted to spell crit, your spell crit gets converted to physical crit um, if you use a melee soul. Now, one thing I will say is as you level up, you're going to need more and more hit rating. Now, as it says right here, your classic expert dungeon need 50, your raid, you need 200. So this is going to be a very important stat, and I would start um, kind of hoarding hit, hit things as you get closer to level cap. So around the level 40 mark, um, if you get anything with hit on it, start you know putting it in your bank, things like that. That way, just in case you need to get to uh, that 50, you can you know pull something out. So um, another thing we need to talk about is right down here, the sigils. So as you're leveling through Rift, you're gonna be getting things called Planarite and you'll be getting things called Void Stones. Void Stones and Planarite are big. These are, I mean, the real deal. You need this stuff. Planarite and Void Stones are going to be able to give you um, rare planar goods. There's planar vendors, and these vendors are going to be able to give you things like this, planar essence. Uh, planar essence are going to give you just raw stats. Then you also have greater planar essence. The greater ones typically have either more, much more stats, or they have an equipped spell. So healing spells have a chance to heal for an additional 300 over eight seconds. Um, you can only have, as it says, a unique equipped, so you can only have one of those. And it all depends on your sigil, so your planar focus. So as you can see on this one, we have one greater essence slot and three lesser essence slots. So that means we can slot three of these little guys here and only one of these big ones. Now, as you level up and you do more quests and you unlock more things, you're going to unlock better and better planar focuses up until the end when you complete your saga quest line you will get an epic legendary whatever you want to call it a purple uh, planar focus and that planar focus is going to have all of these unlocked down here so it's going to have two graders and it's going to have four lessers that you're going to be able to uh, essentially slot in which is great synergy crystals don't worry about those you'll get to those when you're level 50 and seals same thing so right now, as you're leveling, just focus on understanding your class, learning your class. And like I said, the cleric is a very unique um, calling and it offers a lot of versatility. But at the same time, you have some shortcomings. It doesn't put out as much damage, like I said, as the rogues, the mages, the warriors. It does tank very, very well. If you want to be a tank, um, I would suggest going cleric. Uh, if you want to be a healer, right now, warriors and mages are the better healers in the game. Uh, rogues are the top DPS in the form of their saboteur soul. And clerics kind of just fill in the middle of the pack. So it all comes down to preference and skill level, ultimately. If you're a much better player than the person next to you, it doesn't matter so much about gear or spec or calling. It matters about your skill level. How good are you at that class? So, I'm going to come out with another video that's going to be tied closely to macros. Because macros are a big part of Rift. As you go through, you'll understand because you're going to start unlocking more and more abilities. So many damage abilities that you're going to have to use. But also, you don't want to go through and have you know 15 of them down here on the bottom that you're going to have to go through and just click a whole bunch. You want to make sure you use these effectively. So a quick overview, like I said, I'm going to post a more in-depth video, but a quick overview for macros is like so. Essentially, I took my base ability. This is one that I spam. You do pound, show, crushing blow, 
and this is going to show whatever ability you want. So right down here. So I could change this to Massive Blow if I wanted, and it would show me my cooldown on Massive Blow. So you want to always suppress macro failures. The reason you do this is because if you don't, you're going to have red text flying up your screen right up here 24-7. It's just going to start rolling out of range, out of range, out of range. This ability is on cooldown, this ability is on cooldown, so on and so forth. You don't want to see that, so throw suppress macro failures right in there. Then you get to the fun part. The fun part is actually putting the abilities in here. Now you want to make sure that you put cast the ability. So these are all um, case sensitive. So make sure that you type them in correctly. And they're also dependent on cooldowns. You want to do the highest cooldown at the top, the lowest cooldown at the bottom, and um, it's going to just go down the list. So each time you press this button, this base button, it's going to just go down this list. Cast Massive Blow. Okay, that's on cooldown. So let's go to the next one. Bolt of Radiance. Okay, that's on cooldown. Jolt. That's not available. Crushing Blow. Now, Crushing Blow doesn't have a cooldown, as you can see in the tooltip in the bottom right-hand corner. So, neither does Eckerd's Grasp. But here's the deal. Crushing Blow is a melee ability. And when you're in raids, when you're in whatever, any sort of encounter, you want to make sure you're maximizing your uptime, right? So if I'm casting Crushing Blow, but I'm further than melee range, it's not going to do anything and I'm losing DPS. But if you put this in here, Cast Eckerd's Grasp, which is a ranged ability, you're still able to uh, dish out DPS because you are now officially within this range, this realm. And as you're going through, you're damaging different, different opponents, things like that, and you have to run and get away, you can still spam this, still maximize your uptime on DPS. You might not be doing Crushing Blow, but you're still throwing out some damage. Then you hit save. You grab your icon up here. You can't grab it from here. This won't do anything. You have to grab it from up here and drag it down here. So pretty slick. Um, some of the big questions that I get around this are uh, dots, things like that. So some people, they try to put too much in their macros. So Shaman, for instance, I have all of this, which is most of my DPS abilities. But then I also have Lightning Hammer. If you put Lightning Hammer in there, since there's no cooldown on it, wherever you put it, it's just going to keep casting it over and over and over again. And you're not going to get anything below that. So there's some stuff that just doesn't make sense and you can't really do. Um, there's other stuff that doesn't really make sense to do, like Glacial Shield, things like that. So it's really up to you guys. Have fun with it. Learn. Here's my Inquisitor one for my Dots, uh, Sanction Heretic, and Vex. Here's another one for my um, Justicar class. So macros are pretty slick. Rifts are one of the only games I've ever seen where you can actually macro most of your stuff. And it makes sense. I mean, you have so many abilities. You need to be able to kind of put them in a compressed folder and run through them really quick. So one other thing I want to talk to you guys about since we're talking on the subject of leveling is right over here in skills. Now, skills are very important and Rift did, they do a great, great job of keeping your skills with your current level. So for instance, I'm an artificer, rune crafter, I have foraging, survival, and fishing. So fishing, I didn't spend enough time on, so that one fell behind, but foraging, rune crafting, um, those two are way up. They're on par with uh, my level 27 zones that I'm in. And I'm able to, you know, keep gathering things, uh, craft things, uh, break things down, and I'm able just to keep continuing forward. So make sure that you grab professions while you're leveling and spend time to focus on them. Crafting dailies give you big experience. They give you artisan marks, which are used at max level for recipes. They give you um, additional stuff to sell on the auction house and it doesn't take extra effort, so you might as well do it. That way, by the time you're level 50, you don't have to go back and try to re-level it all again. There's also things out in the world called artifacts. Artifacts are hidden, sparkly things. They look like, no joke, little um, glowing balls on the ground. When you click on them, they give you things. And so, for instance, I got these Chronophase gloves. So these gloves... Um, I, I unlocked, if I unlock the Chrono Spectacles, 
the Time Flux Notebook and the Time Flux Hourglass, then I get a glowing chest as a reward, which has items, could have a mount, a pet, it could have a lucky coin, things like that. And they're out in the world, look for them. They're typically hidden in plain sight. So make sure to look in tree trunks, underneath bridges, up in trees, in between nooks and crannies, things like that. Find them, just collect them. If you get any that are um, either, you know, legendary like this, there's some that are, or epic rather, there's some that are legendary, they're orange. Those ones you want to make sure that you uh, sell or, you know, figure out what you want to do with them because some sell for a pretty penny. They can sell for quite a bit. Um, but that really kind of wraps up the whole leveling experience for Rift. Now, I know I started this video off, you know, kind of aimed towards Cleric, and I got a little more generic with it. But I hope you guys explore, look at different builds, things like that. I mean, this is what I prefer. This isn't by any means a, you have to go with this build to do the most. This isn't a min-max build. I mean, you're, you could roll Druid if you want. Um, it's not really a class for me, personally, but you could roll it if you wanted. Uh, shoot, you could roll Sentinel all the way to the top. You could roll Warden for healing. I mean, uh, Kabbalist if you're into heavy AoE damage um, and sigils and things like that. So the possibilities are endless and it's just a phenomenal system to play around with. I've respect five or six times and I'm only level 27 um, just to change my style for the zone that I'm in. Some styles work better than others and it really just, you have to be fluid with it. So that wraps up this video guys. I hope you learned something about leveling and rift, uh, especially on the cleric soul. And let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Like what, what's, what build do you guys like to run with? What build do you have to level with? Um, if you're at in game, how are things at in game? I'm still working there myself. And uh, but yeah, all in all, I'm just really curious to see what you guys think. And if you have any questions, anything like that. So um, yeah, that wraps up today's video. Until next time, this has been Vulcan, and I am out. With the